Welcome once again to our daily morning devotion. So today, uh, we are on the day 21 of the second purpose in our lives which we are formed in God's family. At dito natin makikita na uh, ang ating Panginoon ay very interested talaga at uh, nagbibigay sa kanya ng kaguluguran at uh, kaluwalhatian kung tayo na lahat ng mananampalataya, lahat ng mga anak niya ay nagkakaisa at nagkakaroon ng uh, magandang samahan ng bawat isa sa atin. So, before we uh, continue, let us pray and ask God's power for us to listen and understand His Word of truth. Father God in heaven, we bless your name, we glorify your name on high, O God. Tunay nga po, Panginoon, napakabuti mo sa aming mga buhay. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ama, sa lahat ng ginawa mo at gagawin mo pa sa aming buhay. So today, Father, as we commit to you our burning devotion, please give us a receptive heart, a teachable heart, and most of all, give us the wisdom and knowledge to understand your word of truth that gives us hope, life, and direction in every day of our lives. We ask the power of your Holy Spirit to minister to each and every one of us because apart from you, we are nothing. But in your glorious presence, we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. So today, Father, we believe by faith that you will do great and mighty things in our lives and through our lives for your greater glory and honor. This is our prayer in the mighty, sweet, precious, holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. So, uh, the title of this message is Protecting your church. Sabi nun sa Ephesians 4 verse 3, you are joined together with peace through the Spirit, so make every effort to continue together in this way. At sinabi rin po sa Colossians chapter 3 verse 14, most of all, let love guide your life, for then the whole church will stay together in perfect harmony. Dito natin makita na ang Panginoong Heso Kristo ay Binigyan niyang diin talaga na ang uh, isa sa pinaka-importante bago siya uh, umakyat sa langit nung time na yun. Ito yung uh, prayer niya na makikita natin sa verse uh, sa John 17 verse 17 to 23. At dito niya sinabi doon na we are be, uh, Jesus Christ prayed passionately for the unity of His church. So it is your job to protect the family or the protect the unity of your church. So unity in the church is so important that the New Testament gives more attention to it than to either heaven or hell. So God deeply desires that we experience oneness and harmony with each other. So unity is the soul of fellowship. So dito natin may experience yung uh, tunay na pagmamahalan, tunay na pagkakaisa kapag, di ba sabi niya, sabi doon sa isang kanta na napaka napakasaya kapag lahat ng mga mananampalataya, lahat ng mga kapatiran ay nagkakasa. So, dito natin din makikita na it's not only through words but also we put also into action what we learn and what we we acquire from uh, from the word of God kasi dito natin makikita na uh, inalintulad ng Panginoon ng isang pamilya, ng spiritual family from our physical family. Kagaya din ba napakasaya kapag nagkakaisa ang mga, mga isang pamilya, nagkakaisa ang mag, mga magulang at kanyang mga anak. So, ganun din po sa isang church, sa spiritual family that we belong to Ang gusto ng Panginoon, magkaroon din tayo ng pagkakaisa at pagmamahalan. At sinabi dito, our supreme model for unity is the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, they are unified as one. And God Himself is the highest example of sacrificial love, the humble uh, other-centeredness, and the perfect harmony. So, uh, doon po talaga na God had exemplified yung uh, tunay na pagkakaisa at dito natin makikita rin na uh, nothing on earth is more valuable to God 
than his church. So, sino nga ba, ano ba yung church, kundi tayo, tayo, mga, uh, mga magkakapatid sa pananampalataya. At sinabi dito, nothing on earth is valuable to God than his church. So, he paid the highest price for it. And he wants it to be protected from the devastating damage that is caused by division, conflict, and disharmony. So, dito ayo talaga ng Panginoon na nandoon yung uh, divisive spirit, nandoon yung uh, disharmony or disunity, at ayo na ayo niya talaga ng Panginoon yung nagkakaroon ng uh, division. kumbaga sa isang church. So, if you are a part of God's family, ito yung, ito yung responsibility natin as believers to protect the unity where we belong or the church where we belong or the fellowship that we had. So, you are commissioned by Christ. Lahat po tayo ay commissioned by Jesus Christ to do everything possible to preserve the unity, protect the fellowship, and to promote harmony in our church family and among all the believers. At sinabi nga doon sa Ephesians 4.3, sabi, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the band of peace. So, paano natin magagawa ito? So, sa Bible, binibigyan po tayo ng uh, practical advice. At una po doon is, focus on what we have in common, not our differences. So, lahat naman po tayo, we are being created unique in the eyes of God. So, there are, we have also these differences. So, kailangan natin mag-focus ano yung common na, ano yung meron tayo. Hindi yung, hindi natin uh, kumbaga yung, hindi natin pagkakapares o kumbaga, our differences. Hindi doon tayo mag-focus. So, sabi nga ni Paul, Apostle Paul sa Romans 14.19 Let us concentrate on things which make for harmony and on the growth of one another's character. So, as believers, we share one Lord, one body, one purpose, one Father, one Spirit, one hope, one faith, one baptism, and one love. So, we share the same salvation, the same life, and the same future. Factors far from more important than any differences we could enumerate. So, Dito tayo, we must remember that it was God who chose us to give us different personalities. So, magkakaiba yung personalities natin. Walang, walang magkakaparehas. Yung identical twins nga, di ba? Magkaiba sila ng ugali. Magkamukha nga, pero magkaiba pa rin ng ugali. So, ganun din po tayo. We are uniquely created by God. So, magkakaiba yung differences natin. So, uh, it's normal naman po na mayroon tayong um, mag magkakaiba yung ating personalities para para sa gayon uh, ang ating Panginoon we can enjoy the different skills different gifts that God has given to each and every one of us kaya nga di ba sa isang orchestra hindi naman lahat tumutugtog lang ng violin o ba o isa lang tumutugtog lang ng ano so different skills ganoon din po Kapag uh, maganda yung, di ba, magkaroon ng unity, magkaroon ng harmony, di ba, napakaganda po yung outcome. Ganon din po, lahat po tayo, we have different personalities, different characters, different upbringing, pero ang importante po, nagkakaisa po tayo as one body of Christ. Kung ibig sabihin nun, we live in a harmonious relationship with one another. Huwag natin, huwag tayo mag-focus yung, oh, iba naman yung ugali niya, iba naman yung gusto niya, iba naman yung ano. Yes, we have different kinds of uh, uh, likes or dislikes, and yet, God had chose it for us to have differences, for us to work in unity, for uh, to fulfill His purpose and plans of His church here on earth as it is in heaven. At ayun po, For unity's sake, we must never let differences divide us. So, wag natin hayaan na maging uh, yun ay had lang ang ating differences. Yung hindi na uh, pagkakaiba natin, ito yung hindi maging had lang, kundi gamitin natin ito as a teamwork for us uh, to do what God wants us to do in His church for the propagation of His uh, word of truth 
especially to those to the lost souls na makikita nila na kapag makikita nila oh nagkakaisa yung uh, church na ito maganda yung relationship nila so automatic po yun na we can attract lost souls for the kingdom of God ganun din po so ayun po We, ma we must stay focused on what matter most. Diba yung mga previous le lessons natin? What matter most is talaga yung pag-ibig na nagmumula sa ating Panginoon. So, learning to love each other as Christ has loved us. So, diba? Hindi mahirap yun, diba mga kapatid? Mahalin mo ang yung kapwa, lalong-lalo na yung nakakasakit sa'yo, di po ba? Uh, kaya, yun nga, love your enemies, hindi lang yung love your friends, love your... Uh, those who love you, pero ang, ang utos din ng Panginoon, we should also love our enemies. Di po ba? So, ayun po. So, conflict is usually a sign that focus has shifted us to less important issues. So, the things Bible calls the disputable matters. So, when we focus on personalities, preferences, interpretations, styles, or methods, divisions will always happen. So, hindi tayo doon mag-focus sa mga differences natin, sa personalities natin, kundi mag-focus tayo doon sa what is common in us. So, ano nga ba yung common in us? Iyon yung pag-ibig na nagmumula sa ating Panginoon. Mahalin natin ang ating kapwa and most of all, yung uh, purpose natin ay naka-align doon sa purpose ng Panginoon sa ating buhay and let His will be done in our lives. So, pangalawa po, be realistic in your expectations. So, ano nga ba to? So, once you discover what God intends real fellowship to be, it is easy to become Uh, discouraged by the gap between the ideal and the real in your church. So, we must passionately love the church in spite of His imperfection. So, there's no perfect church, mga kapatid, but we have a perfect God in our lives. So, yung tandaan po natin, lahat po tayo, we all fall short of the glory of God. Lahat po tayo, we need a Savior, we need God, we need Jesus Christ in our lives, and we need Also, the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. So, kailangan natin maging realistic, realistic tayo sa ating expectations. Let's focus on the real thing, not on the ideal thing. So, other believers will disappoint you and let you down. But that's not, not an excuse to stop fellowshipping with them. So, there are your fam they are your family. Lahat naman po tayo nagkakamali, di po ba? Lahat uh, mag ma magkakaroon tayo ng mga kapatiran na they will discourage you, they will disappoint you. Pero, wag tayo mag-focus doon, mga kapatid, kundi continue to embrace them with your love, with God's love. Patuloy mo sila intindihin kung ikaw ay mas, uh, mas mature sa pananampalataya. Continue to adjust yourself. Ikaw yung mag-adjust. Take the initiative. To be, uh, to adjust yourself for them. Wag, wag, wag mo silang uh, gawin na maging stumbling block kundi uh, nandyan ka nilagay ni Lord sa'yo yung mga tao na yon para sa gayon you are there to be uh, to be an encourager for them and not a uh, discourager for them. Especially if they are still a uh, baby Christians. Di po ba? So, every day, every day of our lives we grow in the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, lahat po tayo na uh, lumalakad sa ating uh, pananampalataya, nandun pa rin yung mga some distractions, but we should not be uh, discouraged, we should not be disappointed, pero mas lalo tayong maging uh, matatag sa ating pananampalataya, and most specially, kailangan natin yung patience, understanding sa ating kapwa believers. Ayun po, sabi nga sa Ephesians 4 verse 2, sabi, Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. So, ang, ang ultimate motivation pa rin dito for having a unity and a harmonious relationship in a church is yung godly love. Ito yung agape love na nagbumula sa Panginoon na pwede natin ibigay sa ating uh, kapwa, lalong lalo na sa ating mga kapatiran sa ating sa pananampalataya. So, yun po, be realistic in your expectation. And sinabi nga, di ba, sa previous chapter, yung uh, shiner ni Sister Aya, di po ba, reconciliation. Kailangan natin ng reconciliation, especially with broken relationship. Kasi, uh, 
ang talagang ang, ang talagang uh, gusto ng Panginoon is magkaroon tayo ng reconciliation with one another. Kung meron kang hindi magandang uh, uh, nakikita sa kapatid mo o na, ikaw ay nasaktan, make the initiative, make the first move na kausapin yung tao. At kinakailangan na God wants us to be reconciled to each other kasi He is a God of restoration. Gusto niya talaga ng Panginoon na magkaisa tayo bilang isang pamilya ng Panginoon. So, ayun po. Reconciliation not running away is the road to stronger character and deeper and deeper fellowship. So, yun po, kinakailangan natin na magkaroon po tayo ng uh, magandang relasyon o kaya pagpapatawad sa bawat isa sa atin. Di po ba, mga kapatid? So, yun po. Pangatlo po is choose to encourage rather than criticize. Ito po yung message ni Sister Olive, di po ba, sa previous uh, lesson natin na kinakailangan natin, we need to encourage each other. Huwag na tayong i-criticize. Di ba, sabi niya, there is, there is a constructive criticism and destructive criticism. So, doon tayo sa constructive criticism in a way talaga na if we really want to to make that uh, kapatiran natin na gusto, niya, gusto, gusto mo rin siya na lumago sa kanyang pananampalataya, pag nakikita mo rin po siya na Uh, hindi maganda yung ginagawa niya so you as a matured Christian will be accountable to him or to her na pagsabihan siya na na uh, ang ginagawa niya ay hindi tama at hindi kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon so you are there to correct not to tolerate di po ba? so ayun po we need to encourage them so it is always easier to stand on the sidelines and take shots at those who are serving than it is to get involved and make contribution. So, God warns us over and over not to criticize, compare, or judge each other. So, huwag tayong maging uh, kumbaga, i-compare mo yung sarili mo sa iba kasi hindi yun ang gusto ng Panginoon, kundi ang gusto ng Panginoon, we uh, we are there in one church, in one fellowship talaga, as a teamwork to fulfill God's plan in our lives. So, wag mo wag mo musgahan ang iyong kapatid. Wag mong i-criticize o i-compare kundi nandoon ka bilang isang kapatiran na uh, kalakasan nila. Makikita ka nila na ikaw yung kalakasan nila, ikaw yung makikita na ng magandang ehemplo kundi ikaw din ang isang encourager para sa kanila. Kasi lahat naman po tayo, we have our own weaknesses, we have our own strength. Kaya tayo pinagtagpo-tagpo ng Panginoon with different personalities, character, and behavior for us to be a teamwork for the, for the glory of God. At iyon po para maitaguyod ang uh, ang mission ng Panginoon dito sa dupa. So, ayun po. Sinabi sa Romans 14.4, What right do you have to criticize someone else's servants? Only their Lord can decide if they are doing right. So, ayun po. Yun po yung kailangan natin i-protect ang church. Huwag tayo maging uh, yung maging uh, have that critical spirit kundi kailangan natin we have that encouraging spirit for them to know that God lives in us and the Holy Spirit dwells in us at makikita talaga yung uh, Christ-likeness in our lives. So, ayun po. At pangapat po, refuse to listen to gossip. Di ba? So, di ba ang ang gossip o chismis ay ito yung isang uh, isang way ni Satan to distract or divide the family of God. Kaya kapag may kapag may alam ka na na chismis uh, regarding the life of others, have the courage. Magkaroon ka ng uh, uh, courage na sabihin mo kapatid or uh, kay be friend or ano man yung gusto mong sabihin o tawag sa kanya we need to stop kasi the more na entertain mo ang gossip the more that uh, Satan will continue to distract the fellowship to each and everyone in that uh, community or in that church where you belong so kinakailangan natin kung kailangan natin we need to refuse to listen. So, ano nga bang dapat natin gawin? Kailangan natin na uh, pagsabihan and at the same time give her or him the best advice na 
kung mayroon siyang hindi uh, pagkakaunawaan sa, sa, sa ibang tao, give her the best advice to talk to that person kung, kan, kung kanino talaga siya uh, sa, sa taong concern para sa gayon, magkakaroon ng uh, reconciliation, magkakaroon ng uh, resolution doon kung meron mang mga problem that occurred between them. So, ayun po, huwag tayong, uh, huwag natin entertain ang gossip kasi ito yung nakaka-distract minsan sa mga uh, fellowship or sa mga magkakaibigan. Ayun po. So, sabi nga sa Proverbs 17.4, troublemakers listen to troublemakers. So, sinabi rin sa Jude 1.9, Indeed, sabi, these are the ones who split churches thinking only of themselves. So, kinakailangan natin, mga kapatid, na iwasan natin yung chismis, yung gossip, or slandering. Kasi ito yung isa sa mga uh, cause ng division or conflict sa church. So, ayaw-ayaw na Panginoon talaga na magkakaroon ng ganitong mga uh, pangyayari sa isang church. Kundi, let's continue to be a peacemaker. Diba sabi sa Matthew uh, 5 verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers because they are called children of God. So, kailangan natin, we should be a peacemaker, not troublemakers, mga kapatid. Di ba? So, ayun po. And, Next po, practice God's method for conflict resolution. So, dito sinabi sa, Jesus gave the church a simple three-step process. If a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him, work it out between the two of you. So, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na, kung meron kayong hindi pagkaintindihan, kailangan mong i-work out yun between you and that person na kasakit sa'yo or something na uh, you were being offended. So, next, if he listens, you've made a friend. So, kung nakinig sa'yo, kung nakinig sa'yo, mabuti. Kasi, ito naman yung talagang gusto ng Panginoon, reconciliation ng bawat isa sa atin. May magandang relasyon. At nakakaliwanagan, di po ba? And next, if we won't listen, take one or two others along so that the presence of witnesses will keep things honest and try again. So, kung hindi makinig nung kinausap mo siya, kuha ka ng dalawang witness daw para sa gayon kung yung itong witness na ito, magsisilbing ito mga, uh, magbibigay din ng mga advice or sila yung maging bridge for reconciliation and restoration of that broken relationship. And then, if kung ayon pa rin makinig, kubuha ka ng dalawang witness, ano yung third step na sinabi ng Panginoong Heso Kristo? If you still won't listen, you need to tell the truth. So, kung, yung una, kung, kung ayaw pa rin niya makipag-usap one on one person, pangalawa, kumuha ka ng dalawang witness. Kung ayaw pa rin niya makinig, or ayaw pa rin yung reconciliation, ang sabi nga ng Panginoon, sabihin mo sa buong church. So, dito talagang napaka-crucial napaka po talaga ito na binigyan diin ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Kasi ang gusto talaga ng Panginoong Heso Kristo to, uh, to have that uh, harmonious and unity in His church. So, dito, private confrontation is always the first step. And you should take it as soon as possible. So, huwag mong hayaan talaga na mayroon kang galit sa, sa iyong puso o kaya ano, continue to, to pray for that person. God, have that courage, have that uh, wisdom from the Lord kung paano mo i-handle itong mga situation sa iyong buhay. So, uh, and last po, support your pastor and leaders. So, di po ba, kinakailangan din natin na we will also uh, give our support sa ating mga leaders, pastor, di ba? This uh, month of October is the appreciation month for all the pastors. So, we thank God for their lives kasi sila po yung uh, nagbibigay sa atin ng food for our souls. Yun yung, uh, at hindi lang po yun, talagang uh, medyo uh, mahirap din ang buhay ng mga, uh, mga leaders, mga pastors. Uh, kailangan natin silang isupport, pray for them, uh, encourage them, and also uh, patuloy natin silang ipanalangin sa lahat ng aspeto ng kanilang mga buhay. So, sabi nga, there are no perfect leaders, but God give leaders the responsibility and the authority 
to maintain the unity of the church. So, dito natin makikita na sinabi doon sa Hebrew 13 verse 17, be, re be responsive to your pastoral leaders, listen to their counsel, they are alert to the condition of your lives and work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership, not its drudgery or burden. Why would you want to make things harder for them? So, dito, kaya na kailangan din natin na encourage ang ating mga pastors, support natin sila kasi pastors often have the unpleasant task of serving as mediator between hurt, conflicting, or immature members. They're also given the impossible task of trying to make everyone happy, which even Jesus could not do. So, ayun po. So, it's, uh, the Bible is clear about how we are to relate to those who serve us. So, pastors will one day stand before God and give an account of how well they have watched over us. So, they keep watch over you and me as men who must give an account. So, but you, but we are also accountable too. We will give an account to God of how well we followed our leaders. So, mayroon din po tayong accountability kung paano tayo sumusunod sa ating mga pastors, sa ating mga leaders. Kasi, ang, ang tinitingnan ng Panginoon din yung uh, inner motive ng ating puso kung paano tayo nag-serve at kung paano tayo uh, sumunod sa authority na binigay ng Panginoon sa ating buhay through our leaders and pastors. So, the Bible gives pastors very specific instructions on how to deal with divisive people in the fellowship. They are to avoid arguing, gently teach the opposition while praying that they will change. Warn those who are argumentative, plead for harmony and unity, rebuke those who are disrespectful of leadership, and remove divisive people from the church if they ignore the warnings. So, di po ba? Kasi, if, napakahirap po talaga yung isang uh, buhay ng isang leader, isang pastor, dahil sila po yung inatasan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo to shepherd our flock, to shepherd the, His flock pala. So, we protect the fellowship when we honor those who serve us by leading. Pastors and elders need our prayers, encouragement, appreciation, and love. We are commanded in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12 to 13, sinabi dito, Honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. So, sabi dito, we, this is a challenge for all of us as believers and as a follower of Christ. Kinakailangan din natin silang uh, bigyan ng uh, yung honor na nanggagaling sa Panginoon. We need to honor also our leaders, our pastors. Kasi siya ang inatas, sila yung mga inatasan ng Panginoon to take care of His flock. So, ayun po, sabi nga ng Panginoon, God says, don't think only for your own good. Think of other Christians and what is best for them. So, God bless the churches that are unified. So, dito sa CFCC, I have witnessed for almost uh, almost three years, three years, more than three years na po kami with my family in this church and Nakita ko talaga, I have experienced, I have witnessed God's expression of His love through this church of Church on a Hill Christian Community which is headed by Pastor Arnold Policarpio and his family. So, napakabuti po ang Panginoon kasi God had put each and every one of us in a church where we belong talaga to be used for His kingdom purposes here on earth as it is in heaven. So, ano nga ba yung challenge para sa atin? What am I personally doing to protect unity in my church family right now? So, ang memory verse po natin is, makikita sa Romans 14.19, Let us concentrate on the things which make for harmony and the growth of our fellowship together. 
So, points to ponder, it is my responsibility to protect the unity of my church. So, yun lang po mga kapatid. Thank you so much for uh, learning, listening with this word of God. I hope and pray na na-bless po tayo, na-inspired, na-encourage, at nagkaroon tayo ng mas malalim pa na uh, pangunawa kung ano talaga yung uh, pangalawang purpose natin sa ating nag Uh, sa ating buhay na galing sa ating Panginoon. Uh, so, ayun po, let us pray. Father God in heaven, maraming maraming salamat muli, Panginoon, sa pribilehyo na pinagkaloob mo sa amin para pag-aralan ng iyong mga salita. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, na magkaroon po kami ng uh, pusong tapat at dalisay, naglilingkod sa iyo, nagmamahal sa iyo ng katotohanan. And most especially, Lord God, help us to be a peacemaker, an encourager. And most especially, Lord, I we pray na patuloy na mahalin po namin ang ating mga kapwa-kapatiran, lalong-lalo na yung mga hindi kaibig-ibig, Panginoon. Thank you, Father, for your sustaining grace, your mercy that abounds in our lives. We pray for our pastors, our leaders. Our church leaders continue to bless them every areas and aspect of their lives, including their families, and continue to provide all their needs. We thank you, Father, for their lives, that you can use them mightily for the advancement of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We also pray for every churches, continue to unite us with hope, your faith, With one love, O God, that comes from you. We thank you, Father, because you are always there reminding us that uh, in every situation that we have, especially, O God, in broken relationships, we need that reconciliation that comes from you. We thank you, Father, for you are always there for us, guiding us. To live a life according to your will and purpose in our lives. Ganon din po ama, dalangin ko sa lahat ng angking mga kapatiran na may sakit, physically, spiritually, mentally. I pray patuloy mo sila yakapin sa mga oras na to. Continue to heal them, O God, as we claim your promise and Isaiah 53 verse 5. Heal them, Lord. And they will be healed, save them, and they will be saved for you are the one we praise. As you've said also, God, in Isaiah 53 verse 5, By your stripes, Lord Jesus Christ, they are being healed. We thank you, Father, because you are a God of reconciliation. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha, our divine healer. We thank you, God, because you are a God of love. We thank you for what you've done and you are still doing upon our lives. Bless also my brothers and sisters who are listening for this devotion. Bless them, especially their families. Continue to guide them, lead them, Lord, to the right path of your righteousness. So today, Father, as we commit our lives once again to you, continue to guard our hearts, mind, and spirit that you will always be the person that you want us to become according to your will and purpose in our lives. This is our prayer. In the mighty, sweet, precious, holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, mga kapatid. Bye and God bless. God loves you. Thank you.